Hey everybody, so in this video we're going to talk about composition of functions. This is another way to talk about combining functions, right? So previously we talked about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions, and this is another way to combine them. Okay, so the idea of composition, okay, is that you first apply one function Okay, then apply the next function to your answer. Okay, there's two different types of notation. Okay. So one notation looks like this. Okay, so this is basically function notation where you have the function g of x inside the function f of x. And people would say f of g of x, okay? Or f composed with g. Okay. The other notation is a little bit less intuitive. It looks like this. Okay. So this little open circle is how you denote composition and you would definitely say F composed with G. Okay. So the function that is closer to x goes first. Okay. Now that works for both types of notation. Here you can see that g of x is closer, so this would mean first we're applying g of x then we're applying f of x, okay? And that works here too. First, we're applying g of x because that's the one that's closest, and then we're applying f of x, okay? So let's see an example of how to do this with a function that's represented by a table, okay? So here we have two functions represented by a table, okay? Now these are the x values here, these are the f of x values, and these are the g of x values, okay? So if you're plugging something in for g of x, say negative one, g of negative one would be positive one. That's how the table works, okay? So let's go ahead and evaluate some composition, okay? So first let's evaluate f of g of zero, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is evaluate g of 0, okay? Now, if we're looking at g of 0, if we input 0, the output is 2, okay? So we know that g of 0, the whole thing, is equal to 2, okay? And now we're evaluating f of our answer, so f of 2. So if I plug in 2, then f of x is negative one. Okay, All right, so first g and then f. Okay, let's look at another example using the same tables. Okay, so we're gonna do g of f of one, okay? So f of one, we plug in one, f of one is negative two, okay? So I would have negative two here, okay? Then I'm gonna evaluate g at my answer negative two. So at negative two, g of x is negative one. So my answer would be negative one. Okay, all right. Let's look at some examples with the other notation, okay?
Okay, so I'm going to look at f composed with g of negative 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in g of negative 1. Okay, so g of negative 1 equals positive 1. Okay, then I'm going to take my answer and I'm going to plug it into f. And that's what we were doing here too, right? We got the answer and then we plug the answer into the second function. Okay, so here I'm going to take my answer, 1, okay, and I'm going to plug it in to f. Okay, so f of 1 is negative 2. Okay, so that means that my overall answer is negative 2, right? This is just the intermediate step, just like here we have an intermediate step. Okay, let's look at one more example. Okay, so we have g composed with f of negative 2. So we're going to look at our first step, which is to plug in negative 2 to the closest function. Okay, so f of negative 2 is 1. Okay, so I'm going to take my answer and plug it into my second function. Okay, so I'm taking my answer 1 and I'm plugging it into the second function. Okay, so g of 1 is 0. Okay, and because that's my second step, this is my overall answer 0. Okay. So first the closer function, and then you take your answer from that and plug it into the second function. Okay, let's look at how to do that with a graph. Okay, so here we have two graphs, a graph of f of x and a graph of g of x. Okay, so first I want g composed with f of 1. Okay, so my first step is to plug that 1 into the closer function. So I'm looking for f of 1. Now if I look on the graph, f of 1 is this point here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and then I'm going to take my answer and plug it into g. Okay, so I take my answer and plug it into g. Okay. So g of 5, looking at my graph, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that would be this point here, and the y value is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that means my overall answer, or g composed with f of 1, is 4. Okay. All right. Let's look at f composed with g of 1. Okay, so first we're going to take the closer function, which is g, and we're going to plug in our x value. So g of 1, we can see that it's this filled in point, not this empty point, is 0. Okay, and I'm going to take my answer and plug it into my second function. Okay, so f of 0 is going to be this point here, which looks like it's at 1, 2, 3, 4, almost at 5, so maybe 4.9. Okay. All right, now these next two, well this one asks you to compose the function with itself, okay? So first we're going to take this, this number and plug it into the closer function, so I'm looking at f of 2. Okay, so f of 2 is going to be here, so that's at negative 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then I'm going to take that number and plug it into my second function. Only this time, the second function is also f. Okay, so f of negative 3, 1, 2, 3, that's this point here and the y value is 2. Okay, so my answer, f composed with f of 2, 
is 2. Okay, and let's look at one last example. I have f of 4 as my first step. Okay, so f of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're talking about this point here, which is at negative 2. Okay, and then I'm going to take my answer and plug it in to my second function, g. Okay, g of negative 2 is this point here, and the y value is negative 1. Okay, so my answer, g composed with f of 4, is negative 1. Okay. All right, so make sure that you're writing your answer out in this format, right? This is the correct format for the answer, okay? Oop, I forgot to write it out here. F composed with G of 1 equals 4.9, okay? So this is our correct answer, okay? And here we have that formatted answer, okay? So make sure that for your answer, you're repeating the question and then you put the numerical value that's your answer, okay? Now, if we have a function that's represented by an equation, there's something else that we can do for the composition. Okay, now let's look at f of g of x. Okay, again, this notation is a little bit nicer because it really tells you what to do. Okay, now this is telling us we're going to take g of x and plug it into f of x, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to take our function f of x, and we're going to plug in g of x. Okay. So our function f of x is square, okay? And we're gonna plug in g of x. Okay, so we're taking f of x here and instead of x, we plug in 2x plus one, okay? So this is exactly as if they had asked for f of 2x plus 1, right? f of g of x, and g of x is 2x plus 1, okay? Let's look at another example. Okay, so remember this would be like asking g of x squared, right? Because f of x is x squared, so we're plugging in x squared to our function here. So this is 2 times x squared plus 1, right? Which we could just write as 2x squared plus 1, okay? Now the right format for our answer is going to be to repeat the question g of f of x equals, and then to put our simplified answer, 2x squared plus 1. Okay. All right. Let's look at another set of functions. So let's look at the other notation this time. So we have f composed with g of x, okay? So we're gonna take the first function, which is g of x, and we're gonna plug it in to f of x, okay? So we're gonna take our function g of x, and we're gonna plug it in here where we have x. So we would have root x, okay? 
So we could just write this as root x cubed or x to the 3 halves. Okay. Let's look at part b. Okay. We have g composed with f of x. Okay. So here we would take f of x, the inside function, and plug it into g of x. So we're going to plug in here for x our function x cubed. Okay. All right. You could also write this as x to the 3 halves. Okay. All right. Let's look at one more set of functions. Okay. Okay, so if we look at f of g of x, that means we're going to take our function g of x and plug it in here for x. So I have 3 times 1 over x plus 2. Okay, and the only thing we can do to simplify that is write this as 3 over x plus 2. Okay. Let's look at the other type of composition with g on the outside, okay, with the other notation. So we're going to take our inside function f of x and we're going to plug it in here. So I have 1 over and then I'm plugging in f of x for x. So I have 3x plus 2. Okay. All right. One last thing to point out about no particular example. In general, you can see that giving a composition in opposite order does give you two completely different answers. Okay, now that's not always the case. Here we can see that the answers are the same, but in every other example we've looked at, this example, okay, and even the examples with the graphs and the tables, f composed with g is completely different from g composed with f. Okay, I hope that makes sense and I will see you guys soon.